What's up everybody? It's your boy Will Carter and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are brand new here, welcome to my channel. Before we go any further, make sure you guys are subscribing to my channel. If you're not subscribed already, hit that bell notification icon to turn it on so that you get alerted each and every time I make an upload. And if you guys want to keep up with me off of YouTube, you can follow me on both of my social media pages, Instagram and Twitter at I'm Will Carter. I'll be linking all of my links to my social media down in the description box below for your easy access. Also, yours truly is trying to start drinking more water because I drink soda like, okay. One of the best things, one of the best things about the whole candle making experience is the really active um, candle making community that's primarily living on the Facebook groups. Um, I am a part of a good handful of different Facebook groups and I love seeing the different things that are posted there. People are posting their ideas, they're posting their concerns, their thoughts, their opinions and of course we all love seeing people's like creations and their launch dates and like the products that they came up with and their, the creativity is just always so good to see. But one thing that I've noticed about myself is that I am not always engaging much in the Facebook groups like I feel like I should be. I feel like even though I'm like like looking and I'm like seeing what's going on on the Facebook groups and seeing what people are posting. Like I'm not really like engaging and interacting and stuff other than when I'm posting like, oh, I have a new, I have a new video upload on YouTube. And uh, I feel like if I'm gonna post that, I should still at least be more active in the community. I've been making candles for three months now. So I guess I'm still considered new, especially in comparison to like the people who've been doing this for like a long time, but y'all know I'm a bad bitch. So three months or not, bitch, I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna make it a mission to be a lot more active on the Facebook groups, starting with this video. Today, I'm going to be reacting to some posts that I have seen in the Facebook groups, in the candle making Facebook groups, giving you guys my live reaction, my live opinions, my live thoughts, and even advice if I have any. This is not limited to any specific Facebook groups. Also, by the time that this video is filmed, edited, and uploaded, these comments and Facebook posts would have been old and drowned it out by all like the new stuff. Um, but um, in real time, it's recent for me. I'm gonna start. Okay, so this is coming from the Candle Makers Resource Group. Okay, so just venting, I have a customer who ordered about two weeks ago, met with her locally that day. That same evening, she ordered more. Met with her this morning. She messaged me this afternoon saying that all of the melts that were ordered, she ordered over a dozen different ones total, were for her grandmother and she didn't like any of the scents and would like a refund. I do not have a return policy posted, which of course is my fault, so I agreed to the refund, but I feel it's a little fishy that all of those were bought for someone else and she doesn't like a single one out of over a dozen. Maybe I'm just disgruntled, but I will re I will re refund and move on with a smile on my face because after all, I am still a lady. I actually commented on this one, right? This is me saying like, okay, let's be more active. I actually commented and like my initial comment was like, bitch, she got me fucked up because I'm not walking away with no motherfucking smile, bitch. You're not getting a fucking refund, bitch. What you want to do about it? But I thought about it. When it comes to um, things that you're buying online or things that you're not like physically seeing or touching or experiencing in the moment and you're buying it, that there always should be in, in like in a window where you can like get a refund. If you're not walking into a, a, a shop selling candles, how are you gonna know if you like the fragrance or not? You, does that make sense? How would you have known if you didn't get to like sample it before. So there should be that window for you to be able to like say, listen, I got it, I don't really care for it, I'm gonna send it back. The only thing I would say is she can't like use the melt, the um, the wax melt to melt some of them down and be like, okay, well I don't like it, so take them back. Like no bitch, smell the cold throw and let me know if you like it and make sure it comes back to me in the same way that I had it sent to you. If not, then you definitely not getting a fucking refund. But if they didn't use it and she just smelled it and was like, okay, I'm gonna like this, close it back and say, here you go. I would I would give the full refund back after thinking about it. I gotta start thinking like a businessman, not like this ratchet kid from the Bronx because I mean. Okay, this, is, this one is from the Candle Makers Resource Group as well. Was the last one from there? Yeah, this one too, okay. I know this is not a venting group, although I feel like it should be. Like we should be allowed to vent in the Facebook groups. I, I, I don't think that should, there should be a rule against that. 
Um, but I just have to say candle making is no joke. I've been stressing out so much and feeling discouraged. My candles either don't have a good hot throat or don't look good at all. You must be using 464. I've been trying not to give up on it because I really want to start my own candle business, but I feel like it's never going to happen. Someone give me advice or just give me some hope so I won't give up. By the way, this group has helped me out a lot. When you're like starting something or, or trying something out, like if something is not working out, like honestly, I just think you should just try something else. So like, okay, so you're working with this wax and it's not giving you the results that you want. Maybe try a different wax. If that wax doesn't give you the same results, try a different wax. There's so many different types of waxes out there. You'll be really surprised with how many different types there's out there. I understand that like, it definitely can be very discouraging when things are not really working out. Don't give up, just keep on trying. If it's not working, that means that's just not the wax for you. And just find a different wax to work with or get something else to try, you know? That's just my, my opinion on that. How long do you let your candles cure? When I started using my uh, Coconut 83 and Soy 10 blend, I actually let it um, cure for five days and I let it cure for three days. I got the same results with a three day cure and a five day cure. So um, I now just stick with a three day cure just for like the immediate testing. I still do plan to test again with a five day and even a seven day because once they're sitting there, and you're testing like the three day one, like by the time like you're done testing your three day cure candle, it probably would have been seven days or like eight days. So it's like, okay, you can try the other one out. For the people that be going like 14 days, oh my gosh, like how do you have the patience? Okay, I am struggling with a brand name, help. Oh, poor thing. Okay. This is what I gotta say about that one, right? I've always been good at like coming up with different names. So like, I, 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 it, I know it's a struggle. Well, I don't because I never struggled with this, but this is my advice though. Um, if you are just starting out, and this is for everybody out there, if you are just starting out a candle business, do not worry about the fucking name. You don't need a name right now. You're not marketing, okay? You're not coming up with labels yet. You're not putting it, you're not getting a website together. Do not worry about the name right now. Just figure out how to make candles first. And, and, and nine times out of 10, the name will kind of come to you. Like just go with the flow, it'll pop up. And it'll be like, oh my God, that's such a good idea. That's such a good name. And it's going to just be organic and natural. I feel like, I feel like if you just sit down there and try to figure out, well, what should I name it? It's not gonna, It's not going to be organic. It's not going to be unique. It's not going to really mean anything to you. Okay, this one is from the Black Candle Makers Club, which is actually the Facebook group that I want to be the most active in because, you know, I love my people. Hello, I'm new to the group and I'm aspiring to start making candles. I've been doing a lot of researching and a lot of the information is a bit overwhelming. I think I want to start testing out with soy wax and vanilla fragrance oil, but is there any tips on where to start? What fragrance oil to test? Waxes and tools? Should I just get a candle kit? I'm trying to start slowly on a lower budget until I get formal. Thank you. If you go back to my very first candle making video, I started with a candle making kit. And if you follow my journey, you know that I have very strong opinions about that fucking candle making kit, bitch. This is my honest thing. If you're going to get a candle making kit, only get a candle making kit if it's coming from a supplier that specializes in candle making. Mine came from Amazon. I did not buy it. It was a birthday gift to me. And it, when I checked on like the website, like where it came from exactly, it was like some arts and craft website, not a candle specific website. Don't just go on Amazon and just buy any bullshit because you won't even know what fucking wax you got, girl. Now, as far as like where to start on what to test with soy wax, I recommend starting with soy 10 because I feel like for the most part, everybody kind of knows that for, that um, soy 10 is like that bitch and 464 it's really hit or miss um you can also try some of the some like coconut waxes and stuff like that but here's the thing you did say you want to start off small so again i would still start off with soy 10 even though it's more expensive than 464 but i would start with like a sample size that's what i first did when i when i got my my soy 10 for the first time i got like um a sample size now as far as the fragrance oil is concerned get a fragrance oil read the description and get something that you personally would love to smell every single fucking day and worry about like fragrances and what different ones to use when you're ready to start working on a collection because girl you're gonna be it, the the practice period you can be smelling a lot of shit girl okay this is a good one this is from the black candle makers club one thing i've learned is measuring by grams makes a huge difference lucky i was testing am i the only person who doesn't like using grams and i prefer using ounces i will say this the reason why i like ounces not because like i feel like it works better or anything it's just because i like to see smaller numbers i like ounces i don't see what the big difference is but that's just me 
How do you handle negativity from other candle makers in your area? I'm new and doing my first festival this weekend. I've been working long hours testing and getting ready for months. An acquaintance of mine, notice she said acquaintance, that I really like, well you don't like that much if she's just an acquaintance, inspired me to get into candles. I was open and honest with her that I wanted to do this. She saw my logo this week and is upset. Apparently, she has a sign that has a gold circle around it and my logo uses a gold circle. This is not her logo, bitch. She didn't say bitch, but you get it. Uh, <laughs> she has several logos with different fonts. I'm now concerned she's going to spin this logo thing into a negative thing for me. She called my graphic designer to complain about the circle and also texted my husband. See, I would have smacked the shit out of her if she would have texted my fucking husband. Now, how much you wanna bet she texted her, she texted her husband at like one o'clock in the fucking morning? Yeah, I would have kicked that ass. However, if it was me and like, let's just say my friend was doing candles and she had a logo that had a gold circle. Um, evidently, you both know the same graphic designer if she was able to contact him. So I would just contact him back and just be like, listen, hey, can we just do something a little bit different? How can we spin this anyway? You know, because I, in me personally, like I wouldn't even want my logo to look like my friends. I would want it to look differently. Uh, not saying that you did anything wrong, but it's just me. I personally would want a, a different looking logo. And I don't see what the big deal is, um, which is changing it. Um, but the thing that got me was how she called the graphic designer to complain. Like, why is she calling the graphic designer? Like, you're the one who commissioned him, you paid him. It's like, he's he's gonna do whatever you paid him to do. And then the whole texting your husband thing, like, she just basically screwed herself with that one because now I don't give a fuck. Like, because of that, now I definitely don't care. And now I'll make sure my kind of business is better than yours with my logo looking like yours so they can say, fuck you, and then come to me. Like you said, like, you are 90 minutes away from this bitch, but, Tell her that you will drop, 90 minutes is not that far to drive for texting my fucking husband because then I will pull up on you. Okay, I got another one here. Okay, this is from the DIY Candle Maker Beginner to Advanced Group. I just realized as I'm wicking 80 jars, I'm out of wick stickers. What are some alternatives? Well, a good alternative would be to just buy some new wick stickers. <laughs> This is from the Candle Makers Resource Group. Of course, you had to be last. Hello, I've made candles for years to friends and families. Then a few months ago, took the big leap and made about 100 candles to sell. Different sizes. I have sold zero. I need help. How do you find your clients? Where do you sell? I have listed them on the Facebook Marketplace. I have lowered the price. I have offered free shipping. Nothing. I thought it was just not candle season. I need ideas. I need to recuperate my money invested. I am planning on renting a booth at a flea market next month. It's still too hot for my health to be outdoors. This is a major problem that a lot of people in the Facebook groups have where they think that all they have to do is just make a bunch of candles, sign up on Etsy, get their Shopify account going, get on the Facebook marketplace, and as soon as they hit that launch button, they're gonna have all this traffic flooded to their websites and now their inventory is gonna be wiped clean in like a day. And it's not going to work, it just, it just doesn't work like that. You need to advertise, you need to market, you need to promote. One of the biggest marketing tools in the world is social media. Get on social media, put yourself out there. It's just not enough just to have a website because how do people know how to find you? How do we know how to find you? You can also get your friends and family to help spread the word about your business. Like if you have a brother and he has Instagram, you know, tell him to post your candles on his Instagram store. And if he doesn't do it, go outside and go fight him. Like, you know, they can help spread the word. There's so many different ways to help get the word out about your candles, but just launching, it's just not enough. And everybody, that concludes my reaction video. Um, I really enjoyed doing this because I felt like I really engaged, you know. I, I'm also gonna be engaging, you know, actually in the Facebook groups as well, commenting, posting. I may not post much, but I'm definitely like more of a commenter <laughs> for, for sure. But I really like doing this because I do feel like a lot of these questions and problems that people have oftentimes gets overshadowed because there's so many people posting and then it gets drowned out. And you know, you never really get the help that you need or the opinions or advice that you need, or even just to hear that someone else is going through the same thing that you are and that you're not alone in this. Um, so I really had a good time doing this and I might do this again in the future, I don't know. And now that we're here at the end of this video, don't forget, as always, make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you have not subscribed already. Hit that bell notification icon, follow me on my social media pages. And if you guys liked this video a lot, make sure you leave a thumbs up and drop a comment in the comment section down below if you think I should do some more of these because I actually had a good time doing these. And with that all being said, I hope you guys have a beautiful good morning, beautiful good afternoon, and a beautiful good night, whichever part of the world you're living in. Bye-bye, I'll see you guys on next week's video.